Right, once again, a blessed, blessed evening to all of you, man. How many of you are looking forward for Women's Day? Let me see your hand. Oh, nobody. Oh, man, I'll tell you. It's a great day to celebrate. Look at all the ladies behind. A few of them waving their hands. Doesn't seem that the young ladies are interested. But we are happy to celebrate Women's Day. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be an amazing, amazing evening. So ensure that you don't just come alone. Make sure that you begin to invite a friend along with you as well. Tonight, in a few minutes' time, I want to minister on the subject called The Church is the Hope of the World. But before I move into the entire thing, I want to just lay a little bit of a foundation about the church. And after that, together with the bills and the worship team, we're going to do one worship song. But before I do the worship song, I want to just once again inform you a very important aspect about the church. The first time the word called house of God is mentioned, is mentioned in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis is the first book of the Bible. It's also not the, just the first book of the Bible. It's also God's pattern for mankind. And the first time the word house of God is mentioned, I mean, is mentioned with a, in a very special manner. The book of Genesis chapter 28 verse 17, just take note of it, Genesis chapter 28 verse 17, I want to begin to have a look at this so that we can read this word together, that you get an understanding of the value of the house of God. Here's what it says, speaking about a man called Jacob who had a vision, and then he says, he starts by saying, he was afraid and said, Take note of that. After that, I want to catch the next phrases. What's the next phrase? How what? How what? How what? How awesome is this place? And now what is this place called? This is none other than the... Now I want to take note. The house of God is directly connected to what place? An awesome place. And it's also said, this is the house of God. And the house of God, this is the what? The gate of heaven. Take note. The first time the house of God is mentioned. And it says the house of God is an awesome place. That's brilliant. But more than that, the scripture is saying, the house of God is the gateway to heaven. Now we don't have much time to teach on this subject tonight. I'll be speaking on this maybe two weeks or three weeks from now. But I want to take note it says the church is the gateway to heaven. The house of God is the gateway to heaven. The church cannot give you salvation. Now don't get me wrong. The church cannot give you salvation. We're not going to don't worry about that. But I want to take the understand church is the gateway to heaven. Now, friends, the enemy, can you say enemy? Who is the enemy? Satan is the enemy. Now, Satan knows the value and the power of the church. So now what Satan chooses to do is the easiest way for the Satan to stop the work of God is if trying to find a way into the church. Why the church is the gateway to what? Heaven. The church is what? The gateway to heaven. Now the enemy knows when people come to a biblical based church, this is what is going to happen. So in the same way, if the enemy can enter into a church, guess what happens? The church will not become the gateway to heaven. It can become a gateway to somewhere else. And the easiest way for the enemy to enter the church, now take note, it's not through the sheep. The easiest way to enter is through the shepherd basana. Can you say shepherd? The easiest way for the enemy to enter the church is through the shepherd. Are you understanding this? This is why we are seeing a dilemma in this day and age. Because the enemy knows if I can catch the shepherd, I can begin to enter into the church. Think of it. Pray about it. 
enemy knows how powerful the church is the church is the gateway to heaven and let's true when you come to church you have a real awesome time you feel a little bit like heaven how many feel like heaven isn't that some people have told me pastor we're looking for sunday i said is your home so bad no no oh, i'm home it's really good pastor but i don't know we're looking forward for sunday it just it's really great we're looking forward for it we just feel love we feel the presence we feel the tremendous a uh, joy and some people who really do not understand it they use the word we feel a tremendous energy now the, if you are a person who says energy i would ref, what you're referring to is the spirit of god amen there's no other energy here you you are sensing the spirit of god the church is an awesome place that is why you are responsible to pray for the shepherds the enemy can enter into the heart and the mind of a shepherd that's the easy access so you and i are all responsible to pray in that sense now keep in that in mind we're going to do a little bit of a worship song and after that i'm going to teach a little bit about why is the local church the hope of the world amen leaders in worship please thank you lord you're the god of this city yes you're the god of these people amen you're the lord of this nation yes you are you're the light in the darkness lord yes you're the hope to the hopeless you're the peace to the restless
Want to keep your eyes closed for 30 seconds. As your eyes are closed, I want you to picture God using you to bring change in your neighborhood, in your workplace, in your city, in your nation. I want you to say that. Ask the Lord to help you to see it. As your eyes are closed, maybe you're wondering how will the Lord begin to use me to bring change, to bring hope. It could be through your smile, it could be through your hospitality, it could be through words of encouragement, it could be through acts of love, it could be through the preaching of the word of God. It could be uh, the acts of demonstration of kindness to people. It could be through opening your home. It could be through you financing the vision and the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to see God using you. For it's the will of God, the desire of God to use the bride that's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is you and I to advance the kingdom of God, to bring hope to the hopeless, to bring strength to the weak. Picture yourself tonight being an instrument in the hands of God. Now if you can see it, while you're seated, may I ask of you if you, are, if you if you can only just lift up your hands and for the next 30 seconds to one minute along with the worship team, I want you to start giving God praise because you are believing for God to use you in a mighty way. If you are believing, if you can see things, come on, lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you, Lord, in the month of March that you are going to start using me. You are going to start using me. Come on, you start praising. You start praising. You start praising the Lord. You lift up your voice. You lift up your voice. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you will use me. You are going to use me. You're going to use me. You're going to use me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. That I will be. I will be. I will be an instrument in your hands, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Rabba, Santa, Rabba, 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 Randa, Rabba, Soka, Rabba, 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 Rabba. Jesus, we bless you. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now you, you have seen it. You believe it. If you're excited that God is going to use you, why not you put your hands together and give Jesus an amazing clap because you are excited that He is going to use you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you today. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to do the offering at the end of the service. Is that okay? So our altar call is going to be offering, right? That's how we're going to do the altar call tonight. It's going to be responding with giving. Thank you, worship team. A round of applause to the worship team as well. Wonderful. Amen. I'm always amazed at all these shoes that these young people wear. Look at this. I mean, the latest shoes are without lacings. Can you believe that? I'm also thinking one of these days to wear a pair of shoes like that. I hope you can tolerate me. I'm really thinking of that. Uh, I'm planning to, I, I'm not planning actually, I'm leaving tonight uh, to India and next week Pastor Kami will be here. Uh, and maybe when I come from India, I'll be, I'll be wearing one of these Indian suits with a pair of tennis shoes with no lacings, okay? So maybe, who knows? But we're looking forward for something like this. The church is the hope of the world. The church is the hope of this world. The call 
of God on the church is to reach. Now I want you to help me tonight. The call of God on the church is to reach. Now can you say reach please? What is the call of the church? To reach. And there was a song that was done many years ago. Touch in heaven, change in earth. How many of you heard that song? Touch in heaven, change in earth. The church is called Ivin to reach heaven and also to reach earth. The church is called to reach heaven. The church is also called to reach earth. A church that is trying to reach earth without reaching heaven is not going to be impactful. As an individual, if you want to be an instrument in the hands of God who is reaching out to people, that is world. If you're not reaching out to heaven, your reach out in the world will be very, very limited. But if you first reach to heaven and then you start reaching out to the world around you, you'll be surprised what God will do through you. So the call of the church is to reach. So we at Bethany, you heard what Pastor Nalaka said, we're very focused on the reach because we believe God has given us a mandate. And we have this understanding that we will have to give an account to God about how we have treated the mandate of God. So R-E-C-H, reach, we are called to reach. Now, you can see this reach. Now, you, if you want to reach, you need to have a P on top of the reach. You have to learn to do what? You need to preach. See, you cannot reach if you're not willing to preach. The church is called to preach. To preach what? To preach Christ, to preach Christ crucified, to preach that Christ is the answer and the only way. We are the people who need to preach. The church is called to preach. There are various ways that you preach. One of the forms of preaching is exactly what I'm doing right now. You preach in this sense, through words. But everybody doesn't have to do this. You can preach in various forms and various ways. But the truth of the matter is the church is called to preach. A church that is not preaching the gospel, the pre a church that is not preaching about Jesus Christ, a church that is not preaching about repentance, a church that is not preaching about sin, a church that is not preaching about the second coming, a church that is not preaching about the judgment, then it's not preaching the full message the church must preach like i said i'm leaving to india in a couple of hours from now i'm grateful that god gives me the opportunity but you know i really don't like traveling i do not know how many of you really like to travel man i'll tell you why you like to travel i really i don't like to travel but you may ask me do you do you like what you do i love what i do but i really don't like the travel but I love what God has called me to do. We'll be in India. I was told Monday morning, I'll be there. Monday evening, I have to get into another flight, travel to somewhere else from there. And I think from Monday night or Tuesday early morning, they said, get ready. There's loads of work to get out of you. So we need your prayers. But I'm going to preach. Preach at pastors' conferences. Preach at a crusade. They're expecting big crowds to come, so we need your prayers. We're going to preach that God will begin to show up like he does. And that many things will begin to happen. We are called to preach. Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 onwards, he said, the, the Lord has anointed me for this purpose. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to do what? To proclaim. To proclaim means to do what? To preach the good news. And the church, we all must choose to preach. 
So the church is called to R E A C H reach, but you can't do the R E A C H if you don't begin to do what? The P R E C A H. Now I want to take the letters P and the R out. If you take the P and the R out, Pastor David, what do you get? You get the letters E A C H. Now see if the church is to be very influential, that means the E A C H ought to work very, very well. Each of us has a responsibility. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, I have a responsibility. The letter H. Each of us has a responsibility. It's not just feeling comfortable in a church. When we want you to feel comfortable in this church, we want you to make it your home church. And many of you have made it your home church. But each of us who is a part of this church, we must not forget that each of us has a responsibility towards the Lord. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10, it says something like this. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to do what? To serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Take note of the word each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to do what? To serve others. Why? You see, it is by serving others in the name of Jesus that we are able to reach this world. It is by serving others that you are going to reach this world. You need to ask yourself the question, am I using God-given gifts? Am I using the God-given talents? Am I using the God-given resources? Am I using God-given connections to reach out to my sphere of influence? I don't know how many of you do your confessions every morning. Not the usual confessions if you're coming from another uh, Christian background. I'm not speaking about that confessions. I'm speaking about the confessions that we had given you at church here. It's about the confession card. And the third confession simply means what? How many of you remember the third confession? I will invest my time, my money, my gifts, my talents to see the kingdom of God advancing. I will. Nobody is forcing you. It's a decision that must come within yourself. I will. I desire God to serve you. I thank you for the breath that you have given me. I thank you for the gifts you have given me. As a result of it, God, I choose. See, you will never feel offended if there's a drive within you to use your gifts, your talents, your resources to reach out when a preacher is preaching about making a difference. But if you have not made up your mind and say, you know what? These gifts that I have, the resources that I have is from God and I want to give it, uh, it's for me to make my own dream, to build my own home, to build my own empire. If you are that sort of a person, the moment you hear these types of scriptures, each of you should use your own, your, the gift that God has given you. You need to step out, then you get a bit offended. You know why? But I pray that none of us will be in that place, that we will be a group of people who says, you know what? God, you have been kind to me. You have given me so much of gifts. I want to use them to advance your kingdom so that I can reach people. At Bethany, we want to reach people. Last Friday, from our singular congregation, Pastor Christo traveled more than 400 kilometers just one way to minister to 25 people way, way down in the north. Way down in the north. How many people? Less than 20 or 25 people. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Simply just because we recognize God has given us a gift. And we want to use that gift 
to help another? Why do you think I'm choosing to go to India? It's simply because God has given us a gift. We want to use the gift for the advancement of the kingdom. The letter A, P, R, E, A. Is that right? Yes. I have to get my English also right. You know what? You're an English congregation. Sometimes if I'm speaking at the Tamil or the Singhala, I can get away telling all these things. But at the English congregation, I need to make sure that the spellings are right and etc. All right? So P, R, E, A. I need to be. It speaks about active. Getting involved or involvement. Involvement takes time. Involvement is sacrifice. Involvement is sometimes demanding. But we all must make a decision to say, you know what, I want to be active in what God is doing. And I pray tonight that every one of you, as you have launched, come into the month of March, that there will be this desire inside of you. Say, Lord, I want to be actively involved in your plan, in your purposes. And that you will have a, you, you'll ask yourself the question, what can I do to be actively involved in the great plan of God? There are many things that you can do. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 speaks about involvement. The words of Jesus to his friends. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore go and make. Somebody said three quarter of God is go. You see that, no? G-O-D. So three quarter of God is Go. God is always go, go, go. If God is in you, there will always be a go, go, go. Do something for God. Go. Witness. Go. Make disciples. Go. Help. Go. Get involved. Go. I wonder if there's a go inside of you. Sometimes we have the go for all the wrong things and we don't have the go for the right things. So the church needs to get that the go part of it. Actively involved. How can you be involved in this large vision? We have a desire to plant a hundred churches around the nation. This afternoon, I had lunch with a businessman together with my wife and my daughters. And this conversation, he had been speaking to me for some time, and this businessman has always asked me this question, Pastor Akila, what can I do for you, Pastor Deshaan? And always I would respond back to him by saying, you don't have to do anything for me, but what you can do is, you can support the work that God has called us to do. So having lunch at the water's edge, I mean, Tired after four or five services in the morning, but just because I'm passionate about reaching people, planting churches, helping pastors, is I went, nothing else. And I wanted to pray. This guy is going to think about it. He said, let me think about your proposal in helping the kingdom of God to advance. So I want you to pray. There's a businessman in the town who's thinking about serving, helping, and all that he can do is, he said, I can give some resources. And maybe there are some of you, that's the best thing you can do right now. What you can do is actively get involved in giving. You know, one of the things that we encourage you is with a 100 rupee pledge, and 100 rupees is nothing for all of you. I mean, you just waste 100 rupees. I mean, how many of you eat chewing gum here? Nobody? Okay, you eat chewing gum. Then, how many of you 
have at least one cold drink a week. Let me see your hand. Yes. And I promise you, I'm sure many of you drink more than one. Isn't it, Vasana? You drink about 10. I know that, okay? No. All right. Now, this happens. Yes. How many of you eat 21 meals a week? Let me see. Now, some of you not eating also, not drinking also. <laughs> I'm really wondering, how are you living? I'm seriously a bit concerned about this. Because this is shocking. Because you're telling me you don't eat 21 meals. You don't even have a... But all that I'm trying to say is there are many ways that you can get involved in this. You know, when you give your tithe, you're getting involved in it. When you're a faithful tithe giver, you're involved in advancing the kingdom of God. When you begin to give generously, you're getting involved in helping the kingdom of God to advance. What are the other ways you can get involved? You can, you know, say, you know, well, I would like to open my home for a prayer meeting like uh, Suresh and Subi have done the last two weeks or three weeks, Pastor Rosemary. How many weeks has that happened? This is the fourth week. Four weeks they have opened their home. They say, you know, come to our place. Uh, Suresh and Subi, a fantastic family. Suresh is a long-standing friend of mine. I mean, and they open their family. They have three children at their home. But still they said, we want to open our home. There are some of you in this place, you have opened your home. You know, by opening your home, you are actively getting involved in helping the kingdom of God advance it. There are many ways, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you at the end of this meeting, speak with somebody and say, you know what, I really want to get involved. I want to be involved. I just don't want to come to church. I want to be a part of church. Can you tell to your neighbor and say, I want to be a part of church. What is it? I want to be a part of church. That is why you need to be involved. When you get involved, you know what is happening? You're telling us, I'm not just coming. I also are playing a role in the church. I want to know it's the desire, the will of God that every one of us gets involved in the ministry. So it's P R E. A, C, okay, the letter C, is we need to have courage. If you want to reach the world, if you want to reach the nations, you need to be courageous. Without courage, you can't do it. You see, if you want to, pre if you want to reach, you need courage. If you want to preach, you need courage. If you want to get involved, active, you need courage. Without courage, you can't do it. The church needs to be filled with men and women who are courageous. Who says, you know what? I'm not afraid of anything. What does the Lord have for me to do? And that I want to be committed to it. We need courageous people in the church. Word courage is a very powerful word. We need, in Joshua chapter 1, and I think verse 6, the Lord is speaking to the newly assigned leader called Joshua, who is taking the reins after a, a big-time leader called Moses. And Joshua is about to lead this great, vast number of people. And I'm sure Joshua is a bit scared. Joshua is a bit nervous. Oh God, how do I do this? And the moment he's thinking like this, God is having a conversation with Joshua. And the Lord says unto Joshua, Joshua, you be strong and what? Joshua, you be strong and what? Joshua, you be strong and courageous. Joshua, you must choose to be courageous. It takes courage to reach the nation, but especially in a day and age like this, where there is so much of challenge, opposition against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There ought to be men and women who are filled with the Holy Ghost, who have said, Holy Ghost, give me the courage to play my role in my generation so that your kingdom will begin to advance. 
You need courage. I need courage. We all need courage. Whatever God has called you to do, you need to be courageous. I have met people who are not courageous. They have all the courage at home. Yes. Courage at home is not good enough. We need courageous people in the church. We need courage. You know, some people are only courageous at home. Yes. I met a pastor recently. He doesn't have a servant heart. Don't get me wrong. Huh? He has lost the servant heart. He doesn't do anything. He said, God has called me only to preach, to teach, and etc. So no work, nothing else has he done. I was traveling, and suddenly I saw this fellow with a, a bag on the road. I stopped. I said, hello. Ah. I said, what are you doing? He said, no, man, I'm going marketing. I said, what? I thought you told me you don't do any work. Oh, poor, that one. She told me, if I want to eat lunch, take this bag and go to the market and bring all these things and come. I mean, the fellow had courage at home. The fellow is very, you know, some fellows, you get all these types of people. I do not know if there are people like this way here. But you know, but we need some courageous men and women who will champion the cause of Christ. Guess what? Every time you take a step, Heaven will oppose, uh, hell will oppose that step. You need courage. When you take a stand to do what is right, opposition will come, but you need courage. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and say, now go and speak to this person, go and reach out to this person, without courage, you can't do it. The church ought to be filled with courageous people. Pastor, how do I get this courage? You get it when you have the letter H. The letter H stands for Holy Spirit. Can you say Holy Spirit? I'll tell you what, when you have the Holy Spirit, you get courage. For some people, you have missed out on the Holy Spirit. But when you have the Holy Spirit, Guess what? You become very courageous. Show me a man or a woman who is filled with the Holy Ghost and I'll show you courage in that person. Some people think it's the Holy Spirit only to speak in tongues. No, 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 no. Jesus is making this comment in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 and it's one of the most familiar portions. Listen to what he says. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. What will you receive? Power. You know what happens when you get power? You become courageous. You become very courageous. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is working in you. People who are filled with the Spirit are courageous people. How do you get this courage? It's by being open to the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I want to spend a little time praying in the Spirit and asking the Holy Spirit to do something inside of every one of you, only if you are willing. If you are willing, you will see the Holy Spirit working inside of you. See, some of you need a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Some of you need a little bit of rain from heaven to come over you. Some of you have lost that cutting edge. You need the Holy Spirit to visit you in a fresh today. Some of you, you sing the song, you have all the actions, 
but you have lost that fire and the passion. You know what you need? You need a touch of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, He comes with power. He makes you courageous. Suddenly you start doing things that you never dreamed that you will do. I never thought that I will be a public speaker. And up to date, I tell people, it's the Holy Spirit who continuously helps me to speak. Yesterday we had this great event reserved for the deserved. Man, I tell you what a fantastic event it was. I was thinking so much about that event. And I needed the help of the Holy Spirit to stand in front of these unchurched people and to speak. I needed that courage. And guess who gives the courage? The Holy Spirit gives us the courage. When I meet with people, I say, Holy Spirit, I need you to give me this courage. And the Holy Spirit gives me courage. The Holy Spirit gives you courage. But the question is, why would the Holy Spirit give it to you if your heart is not in the right place? To reach the nation. If your heart is not in the right place. Give me a reason why. You think the Holy Spirit. Should give you. But if your heart is in the right place. The Holy Spirit will visit you today. And stir something within you. That you will be used mightily. To reach other people. I'm asking you a few questions tonight. If there is. A few things you would want to see God doing through you this month. What would those things be? Maybe it's a good thing for you to write down. So just make a note. I would like God to use me this month to speak to 10 people. I would like God to use me to bring healing to somebody. I would like God to use me to bring hope to somebody. I would like God to use me. Maybe you know somebody is going through a marriage crisis. I would like God to use me to help this marriage. I would like God to use me uh, to help uh, this person in their business. What areas would you want to see the Holy Spirit using you? Just write it down a little bit. You write them down. Just write it down. What do you want? Maybe you want to start up something. You, I want the Holy Spirit to help me to take the first step. I'm a bit of afraid to take this step. I'm nervous. You write it down. Maybe there's somebody here. You're struggling with anxiety. You write it down. I want the Holy Spirit to help me to overcome this anxiety in the month of March. You write them down. What do you want the Holy Spirit to do through you? Maybe there is somebody here. You are not doing good with one of your siblings, your mate or your pet. Maybe with a colleague, your somebody. And Maybe you want to make this relationship right. Maybe you write it. Holy Spirit, I want you to help me to do this. Just write, what do you want the Holy Spirit to do through you in the month of March? The only reason I'm asking you to write it is, is because you're saying, this is why Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to help me. See, why would the Holy Spirit come and give you power if you're not going to do anything about it? How many of you pump gas into a vehicle that you are not going to drive? Nobody does that, is that? 
You don't know that. So why would you expect the Holy Spirit to empower you with his power from above if you don't have an agenda to be used by God? But if you have an agenda to be used by God, guess what? You will draw from the Holy Spirit. You will draw from the Holy Spirit. But the desire of God is to reach mankind. And his instrument in reaching mankind is no one else but is through you. He wants to reach people through you. He wants to reach people through you. You know, that's the way it happens. We have this Kevin and his wife, Mandy. Kevin and Mandy travel all the way from Maharagama. I've seen Kevin and Mandy sometimes going all the way, out of the way, to bring people for the miracle service. From Piliandala, Kevin, last time you all bought, is it? Piliandala, way past Piliandala. They go and pick them, they bring them, and they drop them. Now, either they should be absolutely mad, or they should be absolutely convinced that God can do something for those people. You see, but to do that, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, but when the Holy Spirit is working in you, without your knowledge, you are being used to reach other people. That's a sign that the Spirit of God is working in you, Glenn. You know when? Your life is being used to reach out to other people. If you're suddenly thinking about broken people, if you're thinking about lonely people, if you're thinking about failed people, if you're thinking about the destitute, if you're thinking about how to help other people, I'll tell you what's happening. The Holy Spirit is working in you. But if you're only thinking, how do I get this done for myself? How do I get this done only for my children? How do I get this business deal passed for myself? How do I get this done for me? If your thinking is all about you, you don't have the Holy Ghost, you have got Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> and I pray that tonight will change. That Casper will go and the Holy Ghost will come. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you start feeling burdened about other people. A church without the Holy Spirit is a lovely fan club where people come together and have a fantastic time. But a church with the Holy Ghost is always speaking how to reach, how to approach, how to win, how to plant a church, how to start an alpha, how to start a friendship group, why the Spirit of the Lord is working in the church. Check, you will know. But pastor, I don't have any of those feelings, but I speak in tongues. I do not know if you are really baptized with the right spirit then. If you are speaking in tongues and you don't do anything of those, I am nobody to judge you, but I want to think. When the Holy Spirit comes, Lushanti, he hel helps you to always think about others. You understand what I'm saying? This is what the Holy Spirit does. So in a few minutes time, we're going to give to the Lord. Okay, worship team, you're going to come together with me. In a few minutes, we're going to give to the Lord. Now remember, when you're giving, you're giving your tithe. I'm teaching here a little bit about tithe as well. I want you to say these words with me, okay? Uh, say in English with me, the tithe belongs to the Lord. What is it? What belongs to the Lord? The tithe belongs to the Lord. Can you also say the tithe is holy? Is that scriptural, Pastor Nalaka? The tithe is holy. The tithe belongs to the Lord. Now, take note of the word belongs. What's the word? 
belongs. Belongs to who? Belongs to the Lord. Now I was speaking to uh, our good friend, uh, Pastor Trevin, who is a tremendous person. We'll introduce you in the future with him. He's been in the ministry for so many years, about 60 years, okay, but he looks about 50 only. He's been in the ministry, for, but okay. But anyway, I was asking Pastor Trevin, do you have a home of your own? He said, I have a house of my own. I said, Pastor Trevin, what if? Now, he's very good friends with Pastor Rosemary. What if Pastor Rosemary comes to your place and starts building a nice, beautiful annex in your land, taking three purchases of your land? If she's building a nice annex, what would you do? I want you to think. If somebody is trying to take something that belongs to you, the chances are you will say, hey, hey, don't do that. The tithe belongs to who? The Lord. See, when you try to take the tithe and to use it to build something of yours, things begin to crumble and fall. Because the tithe belongs to who? To the Lord. The tithe belongs to the law. The tithe is holy. Pastor, is, isn't it the law? It's not the law. Abraham had the revelation. Jacob had a revelation. Maybe following week I'll speak on this. Like I said about the house of God. It's the revelation. The tithe belongs to the law. So, when you're giving to the Lord, you're giving these 100 rupees. Give me that envelope, Sanani. Why? When you're giving this envelope, this is not your tithe envelope. This is your 100 rupee pledge. You write it. Now for you, 100 rupees is nothing. Like I said, people like Brother Ivan. I mean, this is we are basically what we're saying is you fast a meal. Ivan. Look at Ivan blushing. Man, I'll tell you what. Ivan, this guy here. I mean, these guys are master investments. I have watched them. I mean, any given day. So what you do is, you take a challenge for yourself. Tamara, are you hearing this? It's good for you. You like fitness. I mean, one of the ways to stay fit is by fasting. And we're not just saying fast a meal. We're saying you fast and give to the Lord. Amen? What a fantastic thing. So the Lushanti, she writes Lushanti, whatever her surname is, you know. And she would say, if it's 100 rupees, but if you're your meal is more than 100 rupees like Ivan's. Easily his meal is about, Ivan, honestly, how much is your, one of your meal? What's the cheapest meal? What would be the cheapest meal? Depends on the place where you go. But you know, you, I mean, none of you in this English congregation has a 100 rupee meal. Isn't that true? I mean, you, your coffee is more than 300 rupees. You pay and drink a plain tea for 120 rupees. Do me a favor. When you come next Sunday, I'm going to keep some tea bags. Buy my tea bags and put the 100 rupees and go, please. We can use it to reach out to pastors and the outstation. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. You see, tonight when you give, you're giving to reach. To reach. When you give your tithe. When you give your fasting offering. When you give offering. So, do, see, when you give here, Pastor Nalak, you write your name and say, this is my fasting offering. So, just don't put this fasting offering and say, okay, I'm happy now. No, no. You fast a meal and you put this vasana and also you put another offering. That's how you do it. Both vasanas are smiling, you know. That's how you do it. Once again, why are we doing it? Because we want to reach people. Pastor Nalaka told us we reached how many people this month alone? We shared the gospel with 800 people. I was sitting, I was watching. I did not hear any of you clapping for that. But you know, that's a super time to clap. I'm going to say it again. We reached 800 people and I want to see. Oh man, I'll tell you what. How do we do it? Because you are helping us. Because you are helping us. That is why you need to get actively involved. Oh Bethany, 
May you and I be a group of people who are in the hands of God, being used every day to reach this world. What a fantastic testimony it would be when we say we want to thank God that He's using us to reach out to others. So tonight, if you brought your tithe, you brought this, your offering, take it to your hand tonight. Remember, you're giving to God out of obedience, out of love, and you're giving because we're going to reach. We're going to reach. We want to reach people. If we have to reach, like I said, we need the P, we need to preach. Father, we thank you tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor, Jesus. As the ushers begin to take their place tonight, I want you to take your tithe, your check, whatever. I want you to hold it in your hands. Giving is an opportunity to get involved in reaching. When you give, you are reaching. When you give, you are reaching. When you give, you are reaching. Father, we thank you right now for everyone who gives their tithe because they recognize it belongs to the Lord and it's holy unto the Lord. Who gives, Lord, after fasting a meal. Who gives their special offering. As your son, Lord, I ask of you to bless these people. I ask of you use the monies that they give to reach the unreached to, to use it to empower the pastors, the leaders, the workers who are reaching out to people as well. Now bless everybody who gives to this cause. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now this is how we want to do it tonight. I want to come and give and after you give, we want to do this song Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Is that okay? And so you come and give and after that I want you to start worshipping together with me. Ready? We're going to do that. Right? So here we are. Please come and give to the Lord cheerfully, happily. Very good. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord, tonight. Father, we magnify your name tonight. For you are good. I mean, you prepare your heart. You prepare your heart tonight. The Holy Spirit wants to touch you. The Holy Spirit wants to empower you. The Holy Spirit wants to fill you with that courage. Oh, yes, Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. You are good. You are wonderful, Lord. We worship you, we adore you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. You alone are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Come, let's sing, Holy Spirit. Worship him tonight. Flood this place and fill the earth. And maybe it's possible, let's lift up your hands. Your Come on. Glory, God is our heart. Oh, yes, Lord. To be
Jesus himself said when the Holy Spirit comes He said when the Holy Spirit comes He never said if he comes He said when he comes The coming of the Holy Spirit was sure He's here He said when he comes you my people you will receive power from above oh when the holy spirit comes when the holy spirit moment and friends i'm hearing this in my spirit it's not something weird but i hear this the holy spirit weeping over some of you because some of you you have neglected the lord the things of the lord and you're only focusing on yourself the holy spirit there's there's a weeping taking place in that sense mm The spirit of the Lord is calling you, calling us. Lo rakasianda rabasso lo rianda raba. Friends, it's not good enough to speak in in tongues alone. We are a Pentecostal church in that sense we speak in tongues we believe in tongues you know that every day every friday you come and see god does some amazing things but of course the holy spirit was given to make us bold like lions that we will stand in the face of the devil and we will begin to walk in the ways of god to reach to reach thank you lord don't you be afraid tonight I'm going to make space at this altar maybe for every one of you here even if you want to if you sense tonight I need a fresh touch of the holy spirit and you can you can receive it while you're standing right behind as well that's not a problem but you know we're calling you to the altar because this place is assigned in that sense so even as you begin to do this so i'm going to in invite you know pastor nalaka just come to the stage with me take a mic along with me just we're going to start praying in tongues in a few minutes time you are here tonight and you may be you may be a pastor you may be a leader you may be uh, a pastor's wife or you may be a husband of a, a minister of the most high god it really doesn't matter you know who you are and if god is speaking to you and if that be a hunger inside of you saying i need more of the holy ghost i need more of the holy ghost i need i need a fresh touch from the lord i'm going to ask you would you quickly do me a favor would you quickly come and stand right in the front those of you saying i want a fresh touch from the holy spirit come very quickly come and you know come we'll start uh, singing out to us come right to the front right to the front you need a fresh hora baba baba shanda 
Come right to the front. You come, you come. Those of you hungry, you're hungry for more of the Lord. You come. You come to the altar. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, you come. Your sweet as a flow. Jesus. Where my heart becomes. Oh. Free and I shall untold. Yes. Come on. Yes. Your presence. Father, we worship you, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you, well, we are in a very special moment. Special moment. I mean, Pastor Rosemary, I'm going to give you the mic. Amen. Something is happening here. In a few minutes' time, Pastor Rosemary is going to start speaking, praying in tongues. It's a move of the Lord. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Alabaroka kantiri arabara, o kasamarika bora, alabari kanto baraka, la halabarahana sakira, o kakakari kantoriara, alabaroka shatari kamaraka santariara, o kalasin tarabara koba santariara. The Lord is saying unto you, my sons, my daughters, I love you so much. I brought you out of darkness into this wonderful light. Yes. And I brought you to be a light that will dispel the darkness. Uh -huh. My spirit is upon you, says the Lord. Uh -huh. And even as you wait upon me, you will renew your strength and you will rise up with wings of the eagle. You will run. You will never be weary yes. because I am with you at uh -huh. all times. Yes. You shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. Amen. And you will begin to bear fruit upward. And your roots will go downward. Mm -hmm. And even as you bear fruit, you will find that your leaves will never wither. They will always be green. And you will be fruitful. And many will be drawn to you. Even as you begin to look unto me. And draw your strength from me. And you will run this race looking unto me. For I am the author and the finisher of the faith. Just keep on holding on to me and I will never let you go. You will go into all the world yes. and preach the gospel and you will baptize people, baptizing them in the name of the Some Father, of the Son and the Holy Ghost and you will teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you and know that I will be with you always. This is my great mandate, says the Lord. This is the great commission I give unto you. Go in my name. And because you believe, others will know that I live, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are in this place, O oh God. Your power is in this place. Your presence is here, O oh God. Aha. We thank you, Lord. And you're touching everybody, Lord. Yes, you are meeting them at their point of need, O oh God. And even as you touch them, O oh God, let them know they will never be the same, O oh God. For the Almighty God has touched them. Fill them with your power now, O oh God. And they will go forth and shine in the darkness, O oh God. O la casa tariyarambara, ira boshi, kasi kamari kala santariyara. Let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come The word is called receiving. We must learn how to receive. When the Holy Spirit comes, not if He comes. When He comes and we know He has, then you will receive.
and just keep receiving. For some of you, you're going to receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid. You just start speaking in tongues, some of you. Some of you are going to see visions. Some of you are going to hear the voice of God. You must learn to receive. I know right now in this atmosphere and those who are watching even, even right now God is healing people. There's reconciliation taking place. It's happening here in the spirit right now. There's somebody who is really afraid of their job. You feel that you're about to lose your job and you're so concerned. You're living in a place called anxiety. Anxiety is all over you. And in the presence of the Lord, my dear friend, the Lord is saying to you, just receive from me. You receive from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. One more minute, if you don't mind, just lift up your hands right now. As you do it, I just want you to say, Holy Spirit, come fill me now. Come on, you pray that for yourself. Lift your hands right up. When you do it for Jesus, you don't do 50%. You go 100%. Come on, you say, 100%. Holy Spirit, fill me. Come, you say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, you fill me. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Come on. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Be with your presence. Be with your love. Yes, Holy Spirit, fill me. Be with your presence. Holy Spirit. Yes, 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 for you, for you, the Lord will say, it's a 
Let your glory come down. Let your glory come down. Let your glory come down. We take 30 seconds to one minute all of us and start thanking the Lord why don't you lift up your voice and say thank you Holy Spirit for touching me thank you for empowering me come on you do that tonight that's right you begin to start thanking the Holy Spirit you thank him you thank him you thank him tonight yes he has touched you oh yes he has touched you yes he, yes, he has touched you Yes, he has touched you. 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 Oh, you thank him. Yes, you thank him tonight. Come on, just 30 more seconds. Thank him. Say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For you have touched me. Thank you for touching me, Holy Spirit. Thank you for touching me, Holy Spirit. Amen. The church is called to reach. Can you say reach? What's the call of the church? To reach. Now remember, as at the beginning I told you something. We are called to reach two ways, Lushanti. You know, the, remember the two ways? Where are we called to reach? We are called to reach up, heaven. Then we are called to reach earth. You see, you can't reach earth without reaching heaven. When you try to reach earth without reaching heaven, it's going to be a waste of time in that sense. But when you reach up, then Lushanti, your reach here will be very fruitful. That's how it works. The reach here is more fruitful when you choose to reach there. The problem is this. We sometimes like to do this reach without doing this reach. If you reach here, the reach here, Jayanta, is different. And the call of the church, Indika, correct? Ne? Indika. Indika is to reach. And you are called to reach. Malit, you are called to reach. Malit, everything that you do, we know that you're a young businessman. We know it's a challenging era. But listen to me, all of you in business. No matter how challenging your business is, start making decisions to connect your business to be an 
outlet to reach that's how it works you connect you connect your business to reach that's how you do it and it works that way while your life is an outlet to reach your business is an outlet to reach i'll tell you what you will attract the favor from heaven brother peter that's what happens that's what happens you, we all must learn this we all must learn this connect all that god has called you to do to reach but pastor uh, let's say malit is my malli friend young boy they will malit kuse but pastor you know what i don't want my business and my uh, faith to i can't take both together i'll tell you what then you don't have faith at all you can't separate your faith from your business and expect god to bless your business if zion if arcadia what else do we have uh what's the genesis then we have this big place to coffee outlet do we have it yet you get what i'm saying you can your interior company my pastor i i can my company and my faith is no no you connect your company with the reach everything that you do see people don't understand this but you connect it and you will be surprised what god will do I was sitting with my daughters with this business but he's not still a full time born again he's not but they have found the secret jayanta the secret is they have found is they want to be a part of what god is doing even not yet 100% born again and this man that i spoke he's not doing business with right as at this moment his goal last day was to do sales for 3 million us dollars that is all okay rich i'm speaking about the friend you're going to meet okay this one business he said my goal was to do 3 million us dollars for 2019 he said god did it he said 2020 i want to double my goal and he lunch with me and he said pastor a miracle has already taken place i said what's your miracle you remember what amar's uncle said he had done the sale up to date mandy he said i just finished the deal 10 million us dollars 10 million us dollars You see what happens when you connect whatever you have to reach you connect it I tell all the business people you have a way of connecting you watch what god will do you watch what god will do already glen 10 million done he wanted to do only 6 million already signed off for 10 million and finished and the amazing news is he said pass the good news is this money has already come to the bank and finish amen the problem in this era is you do business and you are waiting like for the postman to come it's never come in like but he said the good news is it's already in the bank already in the bank i'm, I'm trying to help you here remember don't disconnect yes church is not where you come and just go you connect your life to reach young people listen don't ever think god is after your money please he's not after your money but we are after god's favor that's how we, i look at it that way I was try I'm going to India I was laughing at myself I asked my account girl I said Nangya I'm going to India how much can you give me I promise you this much she said okay 
I will laugh in. I said, tell me how much money you have. He said, past I have. And I said, how much do you have? He said, I'll give you 60 Indian rupees. So you know what? You can't have a cup of tea even in the airport. 60 Indian rupees. And I spoke to a friend of mine. I said, you need to somehow help me out. He came and met me. You know what he did? He bought 20,000 Indian rupees and gave me. You see, tell me, God works. God works. He's not, you are very concerned about your money. You are very concerned about your future. But I want you to know, God is even more concerned. He's more concerned. Now you, you have moved into a new season, amen? So make sure, whatever you do from today, connect to the Lord, amen? Can we put our hands together and give Jesus a clap of him? <laughs> amen. Any of you going to India recently? Anybody going to India? Anybody here? Nobody? Okay, we're going to give you 60 Indian rupees. You take it and buy some candle for your husband. Okay, God bless all of you. Have a great week. Yeah.